So this is a supplementary video to the video on inventory valuation. In this video, we are going to understand certain concept used in inventory valuation by means of illustrations. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Raise Your Acumen. This is Harshal Patil, I am a chartered accountant and I am here to explain the inventory valuation concepts through illustrations. So before we begin, do subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to get notified about the short and informative content which will up your acumen. So let's begin with the first illustration on inclusions and exclusions in the cost of inventory. In this example, Acumen Limited has normal production capacity of 6 lakh units. Fixed overhead are expected to be at 18 lakh rupees. Thus the fixed overhead per unit comes out to be 3 rupees per unit. Now here we will discuss 3 cases with different levels of actual production. So let's begin with the first case. Here the actual production level is 6 lakh units. Thus the fixed overhead per unit comes out to be rupees 3. Now as you can see the fixed production overhead is equal to actual production overhead. So we have to include 18 lakhs that is 6 lakhs multiplied by rupees 3 per unit into the cost of inventory. In the second case the actual production level turns out to be 4,50,000 units. So in this case the fixed overhead per unit would be rupees 4. Now in this case fixed production overhead is less than the actual production overhead. Now since fixed overhead is not going to change with the change in output, it will remain constant at 18 lakh rupees. Now fixed production overhead on normal capacity to actual production that is 13 lakh 50,000 rupees will be included in the cost of inventory and balance 4 lakh 50,000 rupees would be transferred to profit or loss. In the third case, the actual production output is 9 lakh units. So in this case, the fixed overhead per unit would be rupees 2. Now in this case, the fixed production overhead is greater than actual overhead. So at rupees 3 per unit, the fixed overhead would be 27 lakhs. However, since the fixed overhead is not going to change with the change in output and it is going to remain constant at 18 lakh rupees, fixed overhead on actual basis that is rupees 18 lakhs will be included in the cost. So the next illustration is on valuation of closing stock in case of joint products. In this illustration, Acumen Limited has two joint products namely AB1 and AB2 and one by-product that is CD. Here are the details of the cost of production process. Here is the output and closing stock status of joint products and the by-product. Here is the average market price of the joint products and by-product. And as an additional info, there is a profit on sale of byproduct of Rs. 5000 after incurring separate processing charges and packing charges. Also scrap sales amount to Rs. 5000. Rupees. Now let us take a look at how closing stock is valued in such a case. First we calculate NRV of the byproduct wherein we deduct the separate processing and packing charges from the sale value. Once we got the NRV we determine the cost of conversion for allocating between the joint products. Herein we will deduct the NRV of the byproduct. Once we have computed the cost of conversion, we will now determine the basis of allocation and allocate joint cost of 3,20,000 between AB1 and AB2. So 
So the basis of allocation is sales value and joint cost is allocated on the basis of the same. After this we will be able to value the closing stock. The closing stock in units is multiplied with the allocated cost per unit and thus we get the value of closing stock. The last illustration is on FIFO and weighted average method. Here is an inventory schedule. At the end of the year, the physical inventory is 400 units. So let's calculate the closing stock using first in first out method and weighted average cost method. Let's begin with FIFO method. So we can see that the closing inventory is 400 units. If we deduct this from the total units available, that is 1000 units, we will get the units sold during the year, which comes out to 600 units. So these 600 units would be exhausted using April 19 inventory, May 19 inventory and 350 units from the September 19 inventory. Now the only inventory remaining is 50 units from September 19 inventory and 350 units from the Feb 20 inventory. So here is how closing stock is valued using FIFO method. Under the weighted average method, we first have to compute weighted average cost per unit, which is calculated by dividing the total cost with total units. Once we get that, the closing stock is valued by multiplying the closing inventory with the weighted average cost per unit. So these were the illustrations on inventory valuation. Reach out to me in case of any queries, suggestions or requests. I have given my LinkedIn profile link in the description below. Hope you found the video useful. Do like and share the content and subscribe to my channel to get informative content. Thanks for watching.